Isaac Newton's law, what goes up must come down, certainly doesn't apply to fuel prices. It seems every time I fill up, it's costing me more and more. I know my tank's not getting bigger, so it's time to look at some fuel saving tips. Hello, I'm Wayne from Talk Cars. We get asked a lot of questions and one of the ones that keeps cropping up is how can I save fuel? So we're going to look at 10 ways you can save fuel in your car. And most people that follow these 10 things save about 10 to 20% of their fuel. But a lot depends on the habits you've built up. And right at the end, we're going to be busting a common myth that slower engine speeds use less fuel. The first one is avoiding using your brakes because brakes waste energy, they convert your kinetic energy into heat energy. Obviously you need to use your brakes, but the key here is anticipating the road ahead and trying to slow up in good time. Don't accelerate all the way up and then brake hard at the last minute. You can see the junction approaching and just lifting off the throttle and allowing the car's momentum to slow up will greatly save the amount of fuel that you're wasting. It's also important to fill up with the correct grade of fuel. If your car is designed to use higher octane fuels, it will actually be a lot more efficient when it's run on those better quality fuels. So although you might be paying less at the pump, the engine is not as efficient and it usually works out more expensive in the long run as you have to fill up more frequently. Avoid things that drain the battery. The air conditioning is probably one of the biggest drains on the battery and as soon as you start pulling that current, the car engine has to work harder to supply the power to the alternator. So you're wasting some of the engine power just to run the air conditioning. If you're not traveling very fast and you're going around town, it makes sense to just open a window and let a breeze in rather than use the air conditioning or just use the car's blowers to vent fresh air into the cabin. If you're traveling at highway speeds, there is an argument that having a window open will create extra drag and slow the car down and thereby waste fuel. Keeping the lights off and the heaters off will also save fuel, but again, if the conditions require it, you must use those items. When you're using the throttle, try and keep the accelerator pedal between a third and a half. If you go over a half, you're wasting a lot of extra fuel. Modern engines are much better at trimming the fuel that you're using to match the conditions. But if you keep your car in the correct gear as well, that can also save fuel. The other thing that people's fathers always bang on about is slowing up. Now, most of us aren't really interested in driving very slowly. We've bought a car to enjoy. But here's an interesting fact. So assuming we've got a journey of 50 miles to make, and the choice is driving it at 75 miles an hour or 65 miles an hour, where it's legal to do so in your region. The difference in fuel usage is about 25%, so you will use a quarter more fuel traveling at 75 miles an hour. And in terms of time, you will only actually save about just over six and a half minutes on that journey. So is the 25% fuel cost, the extra wear and tear on your engine, really worth that loss of fuel economy? Just to gain six and a half minutes. Reducing the weight of your car will also help. The less weight your car has to lug around, the easier it will be for the car to accelerate and maintain highway speeds. So look in the boot. If it's full of old tools and things you don't use, remove them. If you've got a roof rack fitted, that will create a lot of drag and can significantly rob you of fuel economy. So if you don't need those roof bars, take them off. They really are costing you. And it's worth looking as well at your tire pressures. If your tires are underinflated, there's a lot more heat being created in the tires, a lot more flexing going on, and you really are wasting an awful lot of your forward momentum. So just choosing the correct tire pressures for your use of the car can actually save you about 4% of your fuel. Avoid short journeys. While your engine is cold, it is dumping extra fuel in to warm it up more quickly. So if you only ever do short journeys, you've actually got a lot of carbon buildup going on in the engine, which further degrades its efficiency, soiling the spark plugs, the injectors, and all the other components. So a car that is repeatedly used for short journeys will progressively become less and less efficient and cost you more and more in fuel to run. So 
walk. If it's a short journey, walk it. Keep the car for those longer journeys and make sure the car gets used to doing those efficient drives at highway speeds. So let's look at the myth. A lot of people are under the impression that slow engine speeds use less fuel. Now, on the surface of it, that might make sense, but actually you need to look at the power band of your car. So just dribbling along with low RPMs, you're actually working the engine harder, and it's often dumping more fuel than it needs to just to keep things ticking over. So selecting the correct gear and keeping the RPM range within your torque power band will make quite a big difference to the fuel economy of your car. And that's probably one of the most significant reasons why people never get anywhere near the manufacturer's stated fuel economy figures. Years ago, when engines used to be fed by a carburetor, the manufacturer's official miles per gallon was estimated at constant speed, say 50 miles an hour. The manufacturers would optimize the efficiency for that benchmark so they could say their cars are more economical. So if your car was designed with that in mind and it's an older car, if you drive at that highway limit that was used to calculate the miles per gallon figures, the official ones, you'll get much closer to those manufacturers figures and it also pays dividends to keep your car in good working order using a good quality fuel injector cleaner and fuel additive will prevent those harmful deposits from building up on the spark plugs and on the injectors degrading the efficiency of the engine getting the car correctly serviced as well and choosing the correct grade of oil can also make a big difference to your fuel economy we've got a miles per gallon calculator there's a link below and you can use that to work out your car's real MPG. You can't always go by the trip computer in the car, so filling your tank up and measuring how many miles you do on that tank will give you a very accurate reading. And the calculator we've built actually remembers your fuel economy from your last time, so you can compare how you're doing. And often when the fuel economy drops, it would indicate that there is an impending problem with your car. Perhaps it needs servicing, or maybe your tire pressures are lower than they need to be so thanks for watching we hope this has been informative to you be sure to drop by our site say hi to us in our forums if you haven't already subscribed please do so we've got lots of other money saving tips coming up